Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll talk about Dot Eliza. So let's get started. So before talking about the steps of Dot Eliza, I'll be introducing what is Dot Eliza and why do we use it. So Dot Eliza is simply an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, which is an extensively used immunological tool in research as well as an analytical and diagnostic laboratories. So in sandwich dot ELISA, the antigen is sandwiched directly between the two antibodies when react with two different epitopes on the same antigen. So this is a type of ELISA I just wanted to introduce in the beginning. So this is very simple, which I'll be explaining you in a step by step procedure. So, so here in sandwich ELISA, ELISA what happens is, so here one of the antibodies is immobilized onto a solid support and the second antibody is linked to an enzyme. And the antigen is antigen in the test sample first reacts with the immobilized antibody and then with the second uh, enzyme linked antibody. So I'll show you a simple model or a preview, and I will be just demonstrating this uh, uh, way in a this thing in a simple way. And later on, I'll be showing you the entire steps. So let's consider these two are the antigens, and here we have the antibodies in between the anti. So here are the two antibodies that are attached to it. So this is the first antibody and this is the second antibodies. So this let's uh, let's just call this particular antibody as the primary antibody and this antibody as the secondary antibody. So I'll draw a clear picture which says which will be like uh, somewhat like this. So this is a uh, okay. So these two are the antibodies. All right. This is the primary antibody and this is a secondary antibody. So this particular anti a primary antibody will be called as a immobilized antibody and the secondary antibody will be called as an enzyme linked antibody because this will be called this will be linked to an enzyme. So this will be called as an enzyme linked antibody and when this uh, when there will be addition of substrate which will react with the enzyme which then it will cause a color change and thereby we can understand the concentration of that particular antigen. So I'll be explaining you completely throughout. So this is just a small preview which I wanted to give you. So if you haven't understood, don't worry, I'll be explaining you thoroughly in this. So let's talk about the principle of this. So the amount of enzyme linked antibody bound is assayed by incubating the strip within an appropriate chromogenic substrate which is converted to a colored insoluble product. So this is very simple that uh, which I explained to you that uh, these are two antigens and here we have the antibodies. So as I explained to you, one is the primary one. This is the primary one and upper is the secondary one. Upper one is the secondary one and the upper one is the enzyme linked one. So this contains an enzyme linked. This is the enzyme linked antibody and when a substrate is added to it, so it reacts to so the anti, uh, so the enzyme reacts with the uh, substrate and it results in a color change thereby we can know the concentration of this particular antigen. So this is as simple as this. So the latter precipitates onto the strip in the area of enzyme hence named as dot ELISA. So it's just the game of dots in which uh, uh, as the as they react as the enzyme reacts with the substrate this particular antibody uh, precipitates onto the antigens and bigger the antigen spot or bigger the area of the antigen covered more is the concentration or less the area covered by antigen uh, smaller is the concentration of that particular antigen so this is as simple as this also so which says the enzyme activity is indicated by intensity of the spot which is directly proportional to the antigen concentration so this so talking about the kit description what it has so how will we understand so in this kit, so ELISA strips are supplied having three well-defined zones, which has a negative control zone, it has a test zone, and it has a positive control zone. So the negative zone contains nothing. So negative zone does not have an antibody in simple words, or it is or which is blocked with an inert protein. So it does not have an antibody, whereas a whereas a test zone does not have an antigen. All right, it has an antibody, but does not has an antigen. All right. Whereas a positive control has both, it has both antigen and antibodies. So these are three definitions of the test control in simple words. So moving on. 
So I'll talk about strips as well. So these strips will be used to detect the so these particular three steps which I discussed, which is normal or which is the positive, negative, and the test control will be used to detect the antigen in the test serum samples supplied by using a secondary antibody conjugated to a horse radius proxies. So as I discussed that uh, there will be addition of secondary antibodies. So this is the antigen. So there are two antibodies. So this first one is the primary antibody, as I said, and secondary is this sec uh, upper one is the secondary antibody, which will be uh, conjugated to an enzyme or will be attached to enzyme. So this particular secondary antibody uh, is attached to an enzyme. So this particular enzyme will be Horsch radius peroxidase. All right. So this particular enzyme which is conjugated to the antibody is the Horsch radius peroxidase. And when a substrate is added, so let's say a substrate is, uh, let's say any substrate, whether it be hydrogen peroxidase, uh, hydrogen peroxidase or any other. So when a substrate is added, and this particular substrate uh, combines with the enzyme, it results in a color change. All right. So this particular HRP or Horst radius peroxidase it is then detected using hydrogen peroxide, uh, peroxide as a substrate, and tetramethyl benzidine is used as a chromogen. So there's a use of chromogen as well, which is known as TMB or tetramethyl benzidine, and this substrate we can use as hydrogen peroxide. peroxide. All right, so I'll be explaining you in a clearer way what it happens when it's so moving on with this. So HRP acts on hydrogen peroxide, peroxide to release hydrogen, which oxidizes to TMB to TMB oxide, and all of that happens. And if the test sample does not contain the antigen specific to the antibody, there will be no enzyme reaction or no spots. So this I'll be explaining you in the steps. So this is just a notation, or these are these are just a kit description kit description of the ELISA. This is not very important as of now. So moving on to the important part, which is the ELISA strip, which I told you. So the negative control does not contain anything, which I said as before, which has no antigen or antibody, whereas the test control has antibody, but no antigen. And the positive control has both antigen and antibody. This. So talking about these steps now. So finally coming to the steps. So in this steps, the dot ELISA strip so here here we have the kit which consists of all the three zones which would be helpful in determining the concentration of the particular antigen so talking about the first step so in the first step we'll add the primary antibody so primary antibodies we also call as the immobilized antibody and the first in the first step we are not adding the antigens we are just adding the antibody so in the first step we are adding the antibody only so there will be no antigens and the, uh, this particular first antibody is also known as a primary antibody or a immobilized antibody which gets attached to the bead. All right. Moving on with this so come to the second part. So in the second part, there are addition of antigens. So in which uh, which will be uh, which will be attached or which will get attached to the antibodies. So as the primary antibodies are added, which we also call as immobilized antibodies. So then there will be addition of antigens, which will get attached to the antibodies like this. And what happens in this case is addition of antibody enzyme antibody conjugate or the secondary antibody gets added. So now antigens have been added. So in this case, uh, the antigens have been added. And there will then there will be addition of another antibody which will be which we known as the secondary antibody. So this secondary antibody is also known as the enzyme linked uh, enzyme linked antibody. So this contains a this is conjugated with an enzyme. So both the antibodies con uh, conjugated with an enzyme, which we call as the enzyme linked antibody. So you can see here so these are conjugated with the uh, enzymes here. All right. Also, there's another fact that no binding of AB uh, enzyme conjugate. So there are uh, there are antigens which do not bind to antibodies. So there are certain antigen specific uh, antibodies which get bind, but some they, some bind, some do not bind. But uh, these are this is a perfect structure. So this is what step two looks like when there is addition of primary antibody. Then we have in between the antigens. Then we have the secondary antibody or the enzyme linked antibody. All right, third step. So what does this third step say? So it is the addition of substrate. So substrate is the hydrogen peroxide. 
so here till here we have reached all right so in this what we do is uh, these are the enzyme ring antibodies so when a substrate is added from outside all right so when a substrate is dropped from outside so in this the substrate is hydrogen peroxide or pmb which we discussed previously so so let's say any of these uh, any of these two substrates are added in the medium so when the substrate is dropped so this particular substrate binds to the anti, uh, enzyme so this particular substrate binds with the enzyme and results in a color change all right so the substrate binds to the antibody antibody uh, enzyme conjugated and the enzyme oxidizes the substrate to gives a blue spot so basically it gives a blue spot and changes the color of the entire medium also there is another exception to that so no binding of substrate hence no spots still of so if there is no binding of substrate by in any case or by any chance when a substrate is added and if there is no binding of substrate with the enzyme there will be no spots developed so these are the spots you can see so these this is how we uh, will observe if the interaction has happened between a substrate and the enzyme or not so if there is no interaction no spots will be developed like this if there is interaction we will see like this that so here we can observe what the appearance of strips so here the use of strips will take place so the, uh, the so we, the use of strip will take place in determining the concentration so here we see that uh, it's a negative control where we see no spots or in this case nothing has been added so this is a test spot so this is how we'll determine so this is just a parameter to determine this is just a test sample so this is a test sample in which uh, oh, spots will be there spots might be there spots might not be there and in a positive sample or a positive control spots will be there so in no case we'll observe no spots so in a positive sample spots always will be there and a test control a test zone there might be spots or there might not be spots and then and in a negative control there will be no spots with that so let's just talk about quickly about the materials required so which is just simply this or this you can follow any of the above so you can see glassware reagents other requirements are micro pipe steps materials required will be glassware test tubes reagent will be distilled water and the micro pipettes and more other tips and here we have the kit which is the dot elisa strip required which will be helping us to determine if the interaction has happened or not or which will be helping us to know whether it's a positive negative or a test control uh, will require a buffer also so entire reaction of the antigen say entire reaction of the antigen antibody will take place in a buffer which is the assay buffer we have the anti antibody hrp conjugate which we also know as the secondary antibody so this is a enzyme linked antibody so this is an enzyme linked antibody and then in this case the enzyme is the hrp and we also have this particular substrate so this is the 10x tmb or hydrogen peroxide and then we have the serum samples or the antigens all right this is how it looks like so this is another procedure for you so in this particular test tube while take 1 ml of 1x buffer and 50 microliters of serum sample mix thoroughly and insert a dot elisa strip allow the reaction to occur at room temperature for 20 minutes then will you will wash the strip three times by dipping it in 1 ml of 1x ac buffer for about 5 minutes each and replace the buffer each time then you will take the 1 ml of 1x ac buffer in fresh tube or vial and add 10 microliters of antibody hrp conjugate to it and mix thoroughly and dip this strip and allow the reaction to take place and wash the strip as in step 3 so this is how a simple procedure of elisa takes place so let's just keep this video till here hope you enjoy this video if this if you enjoy this video uh, please uh, like this video share this video and do subscribe it so thank you for watching mm -hmm.